Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rahul Sikwara, and I'm a simulation engineer here at LaunchTech Solutions. Uh, today afternoon, I will be presenting to you a webinar based on advanced performance analysis for shipbuilders here in the Middle East. The webinar will uh, last for about um, 30 to 40 minutes long. So I hope within this duration you find uh, or spot some benefits that this webinar might have that could improve your current uh, operations. And if you have any comments uh, regarding this webinar, any questions you'd like to ask, feel free to post those questions on the right side of your bar, on the sidebar, uh, in the comment session, uh, section. And uh, in the Q&A sec uh, session, I'll uh, be able to answer them. So just a bit about us, uh, LaunchTech is a engineering company based in the UAE, and we are specialized on advanced mechanical simulation and FEA modeling. We have a strong partnership with our software developer partner, Dassault Systems, and we are their official distribution here in the Middle East region, as well as their development and service partner. More on that, uh, we also uh, perform technical consultancy to our valued clients. Uh, and also we are an official soft, uh, software training and uh, certification center. So we always uh, you know, prefer if our clients get their engineers certified so that they understand the entire ecosystem of DASA, uh, the entire DASA system ecosystem, uh, ecosystem when they use, use some of our tool sets. And with that, I will start uh, by introducing the industry challenges that um, shipbuilders face uh, in order to thrive in this uh, uh, dynamic industry or economy. Well, you should know that uh, shipbuilders uh, need to thrive in a market with always some increased complexities. They have to deal with a lot of uh, components uh, within the ships and uh, because of these, it increases their cost and time uh, to ensure that those ship designs are regulated within some certification frameworks. Uh, as you can see on my screen, there are usually four of them. Uh, two of them have always been there, which is structure and safety, but now it's been expanded to include environment and security as well. These certi certifications are going to increase uh, gradually, and it's going to be difficult for a lot of organizations to conventionally record their changes to regulations or uh, changes to design in order to you know uh, in order to uh, maintain their uh, respect to the fr frameworks so it's so it, it's time for shipbuilders to have a solution that works seamlessly for them so that whenever they go through these regulation testings they're seamlessly done in an attempt and this also helps them to reduce the effective time and cost for them to market their innovation or the next generation or iteration of the shipbuilders to the economy. So let's have an example of uh, one of our success story. It's uh, Bureau Veritas. Uh, they specialize, of course, in ensuring that US shipbuilders uh, have designed uh, ships that are regulated according to the certification frameworks. Uh, as you should know, Burro Veritas, of course, has an increasing customer base, so they required uh, to improve productivity and responsiveness with their customers. Added with that, uh, knowing that they had to deal with a lot of um, components of ship designs, they had to deal with the increasing number of requirements, so they ne also needed digital tools to record, trace, and manage these large datas. And finally, they also, and on top of that, uh, they also needed some rich tools to perform some structural and weight saving analysis in order to confidently audit shipbuilding designs. So, what, so Dassault Systems pr proposed to them a solution which was based on an in, in, entire industry solution. Uh, so that included steel equipment, accommodation, electrical structures, etc. But one of them which they really required as well was the advanced performance analysis, as you can see on the seventh uh, on the seventh uh, uh, number. The solution that we offered them was very uh, uh, was very 
intricate because it allowed companies like Burra Veritas to simulate changes in designs or to ensure that the changes they make were respecting the uh, design frameworks of the regulatory authorities. This also allowed them to qualitatively respond to their customers with the valuable uh, post-processing presentations to them and efficiently pass regulatory standards. Such was the benefits that uh, Burra Veritas reaped from the 3D experience platform. It actually it reduced their overall time to model ships and to also generate finite elements by almost 25%. It, uh, of course, it was, uh, uh, it satisfied the board of Burra Veritas that they, uh, uh, they uh, sent us this testimonial about how adopting the 3D experience platform was a key enabler for them to increase the number of innovative designs. And through this, we now hope that uh, we uh, make, uh, you know, we allow you user, uh, you viewers to discover the benefits that the organization will achieve uh, and the business efficiencies that will increase with using the 3D experience platform. So let's look at the 3D experience uh, platform as a whole through the solution, uh, solution overview of this advanced performance analysis. As you can see, there are many applications of simulation that's required in order to uh, pass regula regulatory standards in especially today's dynamic economy. This is basically most of uh, the applications that are required to simulate, but I won't talk much about them. Uh, all you should know is, of course, you know, there are some, there are main branches of simulation that are required in order to meet the simulation criteria. And I will be talking about five of them in this webinar. Uh, of course, all these uh, all these simulation tools are based on the 3D experience, and the Simulia platform, which is our, our simulation platform, is embedded in this uh, unified experience. And I will, and as we go through this webinar, I will I will allow you as the viewers to explore more about the solution that we are offering to to you. So let's first look at look at the structural. Uh, let's first look at the structural analysis uh, part of the 3D experience. So as you can see, a suite of structural analysis solvers are based entirely on one of our uh, FEA solver, which is Abacus FEA tools. Added with that, we've also made it easier for, uh, you know, for uh, lower level uh, simulation users such as designers to use our platform with uh, automated features such as automatic meshing and also uh, automatic generation of results as you change those meshes. Uh, the benefit of our structural analysis is that you have tools of, to solve linear models which are probably uh, beneficial for designers, mechanical designers or simple designs of maybe beams, bars so that they can understand whether their ships design are under you know certain stresses where they should not exceed it it also then scales up to for you know r d analysts so that they can understand nonlinear dynamic responses of their uh, ship design so that these tools enable them to um, they enable them to pass those uh, regulatory standards for structural and integrity of ship design with that, we also added, uh, sorry, that's also added some integration between design and simulation. As you should know, you're not, when you get the solution, you're not just uh, getting the Simulia platform, you are also having uh, uh, tools based on Katia, so you can do complete surface design, part design using the technology of Katia, and then without any sort of, you know, import, exports, these are directly transferred in the form of simulation so that you can then do not only structural analysis, you can also optimize and optimize KPIs to arrive at final ship designs. As you can see, uh, with the ship design, it's uh, it's the 3D experience makes it very intuitive for the user. As soon as they open the uh, the ship design for structural analysis, uh, you can see that the mesh is automated. Of course, if you'd like to, you can uh, you can of course locally mesh that. 
but this shows the digital continuity between the this basic design and structural analysis so that you could reduce time to immediately you know just add the local conditions like the loads boundary conditions you can even add non value added activities so that uh, uh, your lead times are reduced while doing such simulations and you can even create other uh, parameters such as what if scenarios and then combine all of these to have uh, visualizations of whatever you want whether it be stresses deflections or the right weight for the ship design so that it can pass those regulatory standards so here's an example a demonstration of a ship design that is going to go through a structural analysis this as you can see is the 3d experience platform through katia we're just going to uh, transfer that cad model to a structural analysis and as you can see the mesh has already been generated to make it easier for designers to go forward and uh, do the structural analysis if you want to understand the mesh quality that also is given in the form of these reports and uh, then obviously you can add the physical properties such as the overall weight of this uh, ship you then go on to the structural analysis you can fix the uh, top part and add local loading conditions on the base of that ship uh, in order to understand what the stresses are going to be when it's going to go through those pressures you know so with that you know a, a designer can understand a, a simple design concept of its uh, you know ship design and whether it passes those regulatory standards so this basically covers the structural side of how um, the uh, how our solution uh, performs with structural analysis of course this is just the linear part there are more advanced capabilities that uh, the that 3d experience platform can uh, uh, can provide for ship builders such as yourselves let's now talk about the fluid flow analysis of course we are talking about ship design so we have to consider you know two types of categories of flow one is of course the external fluid flows the second being internal fluid flows external fluid flows were always historically meant for cfd and ship design so that is to understand the stability of the ship while it's being uh, commissioned you know on water but that's now being expanded we no longer have to think about just uh, the stability of the ship we need to think about the crew members it's very important to understand the safety regulatories are now the standards also that are being included with ship design and uh, we need to understand the hvac performances of of uh, you know the cabin crew inside a certain compartment so we have uh, you know cfd solutions that uh, you know calculate the exact mass momentum and energy conservation of uh, the hvac design that's being proposed uh, due to our capabilities of uh, you know using high computations and the algorithm being very efficient uh, you can expect very reduced model timings and uh, in the case that of course an analyst wants to understand the bigger picture or wants to optimize on fluid flows or hvac solutions then of course they can do that with our accurate uh, solvers that can predict particle transport from an inflow to an outflow it's important that hvac systems such as equipments ducts piping are all taken into account because uh, these not only uh, ensure that the air quality is met but also ensure that efficiency of electrical to cooling energy is um, achieved this drives down costs and ensures that the ship is green or environmentally friendly for use we need to also uh, understand that uh, uh, sometimes with security also it comes with the uh, uh, things like factors like smoke or fire these are things that could happen in ships and our solutions are capable in simulating what would happen or when a smoke you know starts inducing where it would spread and all these are important regulatory requirements by uh, you know uh, by uh, the local authorities in order to ensure that the ship designs you make are within those frameworks another type of flow which is extremely important is also internal flows you're talking about piping analysis you're talking about ballast design uh, in order to stabilize ship um, uh, maneuverability during some scenarios so our solutions have uh, both steady state and transient flow simulations to better explore design flaws if there are any 
it is also important that designers waste less time figuring out on how to make these models and that's where the 3d experience comes in it allows the user to have an interactive ui a seamless model and meshing of those uh, networks or internal flows and then it also allows users to have an explore have a design exploration and optimization scheme so that your kpi driven designs are then being considered as well here are just some case studies of how interior flows are uh, done in the 3d experience as you can see in both the images they're mostly used in the marine and offshore industry and here's another case study where uh, where uh, we are trying to simulate the internal flow of liquid through this uh, pipeline and as you can see here um, you want to create the mesh you can see it's a it's an easy process of understanding how uh, how you can create you know the mesh from the inlet to the outlet so that the water can be completed and as you can see in the right there is a guide there is a guidance assistant for you in case you need to understand how to do a cfd analysis it's given in a chronological order for you to stop wasting time in learning and implement it as soon as possible uh, the inlets are then being created so that this tells the computer that this is where the in the starting point of the liquid is and the outflow is then created to uh, tell the computer that this is where the uh, where the uh, where the liquid should terminate at and as you can see the fluid flows or the gauge pressures are then being computed and then revealed to the user after a certain time of computation and that is how uh, you know uh, fluid flow calculations are done using the 3d experience platform moreover you can even have uh, intuitive uh, post-processing capabilities such as uh, streamlines as you can see here you can understand how the flu fluid flows you can take in consideration what are the losses of energy due to bends and uh, other uh, phenomena in CFD analysis. We then move on to EM analysis. Um, maybe many of you might think why EM? Of course, when we talk about electromagnetic design, we are talking about antennas. These are new to certification standards in order to ensure that the ships you design and the ships while in operation do not uh, face uh, or have a quick response rate whenever they're faced with threats such as piracies or emergencies for example an evacuation process uh, antenna performance is important in such cases to avoid any security risk and to provide a sense of security to both the ship builder as well as well as the customer because the ship builder might be uh, might be you know uh, might be in risk of high fines if they do not ensure that the antennas they design are within standards so you should know that some of our emac solutions are extremely powerful and we have a high quantitative number of emac solutions we've got about 25 solutions some of the accurate ones as you see are the ml fmm i'm not going to go too much into these and another one is called the sbr methods we've got uh, very intuitive solvers to un to ensure that uh, that the antennas you design are compliant with emc's analysis so that's basically compatibility of different emacs because we're not just dealing with one antenna you're dealing with sonar radar uh, antennas to uh, you know like gps uh, radio frequencies to call the nearest port so these are different antennas that should ensure they don't interfere with each other and we also have specialized SI and PAF PI workflows. So they ensure that the EMAG waves radiated from the antennas do not uh, affect the cabling of the ships. As you, as, you, as you should know that ships have many cabling, uh, you know, um, uh, many numbers of cabling. And because of that, it's important to ensure that these are optimized so that any, uh, inac any inefficiencies to the antenna designs are mitigated. Uh, moreover to that some of our solutions include gpu computing that enables 10 times speed up to the simulations and they are very easy and in intuitive for the users to set up and solve those computation problems so here are some applications that require antenna solutions so let's talk about antenna placement placements it's very important that these analysis of antennas are done because they need to be ensured that 
the signal strength at any point is very good and they don't suffer any inefficiencies which can reduce the performance of these antenna placements. Co-site interference and mitigation is also another important factor because we need to understand that again, there are a lot of uh, different antennas in a ship and we need to ensure that there is low interference in signals and high compatibility between these EMAG waves. And we have tools that enable such studies to be done. And lastly, of course, we need to test whether the radiated emissions from cables uh, are, uh, are affecting the performance of both either the cabling or even the EMAG performance. We do not want these happening. So we have something called shielding studies for these cables to ensure that uh, these, uh, these uh, phenomena are mitigated as much as possible. So here is an example of you know, uh, a usual EMAX study of different antennas that are set up in a ship. And I'll give one example in another, another demonstration here. So as you can see here, this is a ship design with an antenna on the top of its base. You can create materials to your ship's design to understand, uh, I mean, for the solver to understand the material models. You can then uh, you know, define the minimum frequency and maximum frequency you expect that will uh, occur during these simulations. And as you can see here, you can create your discrete ports in order to create a current between these two gaps and then within that current, an EMAG wave is then being induced to uh, you know, start the simulation or to start the computation. So using these analysis and a lot of other tools to allow the uh, EMAG anal R&D analysts to understand their antennas, you then create a simulation where you can see in, in a bit of time that uh, the results will show, let's just move a bit. Yeah, the results will show that uh, these are some of the parameters used in order to optimize. Here are some of the broadbands and near band fields to understand the directivity of the antenna. Also, you can do other studies such as understanding the interference. You can see or the base is interfering with the directivity down. So it could be beneficial if it's intended. For example, it should not interfere with sonar uh, parts and all that stuff. So there's a lot of uh, studies that an engineer can do with antenna placements as well. We then go with uh, an important phenomenon that a lot of MRO companies need, which is called degaussing and deperming. So you, as you should know, our solutions also enable engineers to perform even advanced physical mo physics models, such as uh, understanding and predicting the sources of uh, of gauzing in hull which can affect gps performance because we do not want gauzing to affect our compass performance which would you know affect location location problems for the ship and it makes it very difficult for ports to locate whether they are going in the right direction or not so we have a set of algorithms that ensure the accuracy is maintained in degaussing and deperming simulations so here are just some examples of uh, degaussing uh, simulations. Of course, uh, degaussing happens because the hull of the ship distorts the Earth's magnetic field by acting as a magnet as itself. So we need to, of course, uh, use a degaussing system or a system of coils in the ship to reduce the effect. And in order to understand that effect, simulation can be used in order to, in order to see whether the degaussing of the ship is done within regulatory standards, of course. Deperming is another um, phenomenon that happens uh, when ship operations, because the permeable materials align with the magnetic field of the earth getting permanently magnetized. And we need to ensure that does not happen because that creates a lot of problems with, um, uh, with you know, static electricity and all that sort. So, for example, a submarine requires deperming to be performed once in six months, but it might not always be the case. So simulation can be done to optimize and predict when is the best time for maybe a submarine or a, or a large barge to be depermed in this case. Lastly, let's talk about noise and vibration and even harshness sometime in ship analysis. Uh, uh, analysis. As you should know, uh, with regulatory standards, uh, it's crucial for both customers and regulations that ship noises need to be mitigated as much as possible. Nobody likes a noisy ship, and in order to 
mitigate these noise pollutions, we have a portfolio of accurate nonlinear solvers to predict the exterior flow noise and flow induced far field noises of these ships in these cases. So as you can see in the picture there, you can see that with our solutions, you can understand where are the largest inducers of noise or sound waves that can affect the overall noise pollution or affect the overall noise quality of the ship's operation, which could be either bad or, or you know, acceptable under the standards. Of course, because of our computation of the uh, of the simulacs computation modeling time, you know, uh, algorithms are made in such where these are reduced effectively, and in order for the users to you know spend more time using it rather than learning it and then using it we have uh, the solution has an interactive ui and a modern software architecture for that so here's an example of you know where radiated noises are made at a depth of water so this can be of course efficiently and accurately simulated using the noise and vibration algorithms within the simulator portfolio we can even predict radiation and scattering of the underwater radiated noise from different propeller designs so of course propellers also affect the noise uh, the noise quality of a ship so these can be done using the nonlinear solvers in our in, in daso system solutions we then can use these solutions to predict transmission of flow induced noises and we can also use modern transmission of equipment noises through mounting structures and underwater radiation from hull so at overall you can see that there is a rich suite of tools that shipbuilders can use in order to mitigate all the problems that a ship design usually will face or when regulatory uh, certification frameworks are there in order to meet them and simulation can of course um, reduce the time taken in order to seamlessly pass the certification without expensive prototyping with that i of course conclude this webinar uh, if if you of course you have any questions regarding this webinar or the contents of this webinar uh, now is the perfect time you know to ask and i'll definitely answer these queries for you Okay, so I have an, a question. Could you elaborate more about how structural solvers could help junior engineers, designers, and senior positions? It's a good question, really. So our tool, our tools of structural analysis, they are split into different types of solvers. So you have linear solvers, non-linear solvers, linear dynamics, non-linear dynamics. And of course, these type of solvers are catered to, for example, a linear solver might cater for simple designs by a structural analysis uh, user, an R&D analyst might need need a high nonlinear uh, solver in order to solve problems like you know pressure points at ships when they're going through low tide, high tide issues and such. So there are there are different solvers that are embedded within the 3D experience to cater to different. Uh, positions in a department all of this done so that the department as a whole can be connected to the design of their ships and to ensure that every design of the ships are within those certification that standards so what is the fluid solver you are using to calculate these fluid flows good question We've got uh, two main solvers. The one that's within the 3D experience is called uh, uh, is called is used using the Navistokes uh, fluid solver. But we have another more uh, accurate solver, I would say, for high speed or for very finite uh, levels of uh, fidelity, and that's called the Lattice Boltzmann uh, uh, SCFD solver. So that is very good when you have hydrodynamic problems like stability of ships and all at finite levels these can be very important to improve the design standards of ships so yes these are the two solvers that are mostly used but with hvac systems i think the navia stokes solver that we that daso systems provide is more than enough for it
can you do dynamic analysis in 3D experience? Of course, you can do dynamic analysis in 3D experience, but again, it depends on the application. You can do both multi-body dynamic analysis in 3D experience if you have a lot, large number of assemblies and you need to understand the dynamic response of these uh, parts. Yes, you can do that, and that's very important in ship building design. You can even do finite element dynamic analysis as well to understand buckling, to understand uh, frequency domains of uh, of uh, ship design so that they pass certain structure struct they pass certain structural uh, standards So I have another last question, I believe. What is the usual computation time it takes to solve a design problem? Well, it depends really on the problem. So you, structural problems uh, can be done uh, depending, of course, on the hardware, but that's not the only thing. Our, our uh, solutions, sorry, 3D experience solutions are very scalable. So uh, in the case that a company cannot afford buying a certain hardware, then of course they can use the cloud, the power of the cloud um, solution that the 3D experience offers in order to do cloud computing and solve these problems. But it's a completely dependable uh, uh, question really. I cannot really answer it in a sense that, yes, it's uh, it takes this much time. It really depends on a few things. One being how complicated the geometry of the model is, the mesh timing, the, sorry, the number of mesh elements that are there in that simulation and even maybe the complexity of the non-linearities you add might add to the uh, problem as well. So that's that's there as well. So I think with that, uh, I don't see any more questions. Uh, these are really uh, important questions that uh, uh, the audience have asked and I'm happy to answer them for you. Uh, with that, I'm going to conclude uh, this uh, webinar. I hope you found a lot of value of the solution that the 3D experience offers and the Simulia platform portfolio also offers to shipbuilders and uh, ship design engineers in order to ensure that their products, uh, you know, their products are within certification standards. They understand that simulation is a solution in order to avoid expensive prototyping. And uh, yes, I hope uh, with that you you find some potential in the solution that we are offering to you as shipbuilders. Uh, I will conclude the presentation and I hope everyone has a good day. So bye-bye.